I've been working with computers and software a long time. I know what default items like bulleted lists look like. You know, that out-of-the-box stuff. And it's not that they are bad, not at all. Microsoft actually gives us high-quality items. But in order to create the most professional and unique documents, we often need to know how to customize these things for ourselves. Just like we would create our own heading instead of using Heading 1 or Heading 2 that comes with Word. As we can guess, this probably means that we need to learn how to customize or choose our own bullet points and designate numbers or letters to use for our list. Let's start with bullets. First thing we want to do is go back to our very first list that we were working with that has to do with that goals section. So we're going to go back to the navigation pane on the left hand side of our screen. Now I did want to mention for many of you who may have noticed that when I first typed outside services in the last lesson that it actually was in reverse case. This is again part of our review of what Word can do. When we're using the navigation pane, it not only finds things as we type, so we probably don't have to type the whole thing, it also is not case sensitive. So a lowercase o and everything else in uppercase on outside still found outside services that was actually the opposite in the document itself. With that said, let's go ahead and get rid of that entry. Let's type perpetual. And there's only one match, so we will click Perpetual Goals, which is one of our headings, back up on about page 3 of the document. This is actually just above the first list that we created that had to do with short-term goals. So we need to actually turn on the list feature first. This is a little bit of a review. We'll delete the marker, select the text, and you can do that any way you want. I happen to be doing it using the keyboard. And we'll go ahead and move up to the ribbon, and we will click on the face of the button to turn on our default bullet point, which is now the little round dot. Question is, what if we don't like the little round dot? Well, we know that we can click on the drop down and that we can use any variety of things that either come with the gallery here already or the ones that we have recently used. Since we recently used a mouse, which is custom, we see that one in our list. You may not see that in your particular version of Word. But what if we want to do some other things? Well, we simply have to come down and customize. We can do so by choosing the Define New Bullet all the way at the bottom of the drop-down. This brings up a small window, and we can see at the top that we have three different options, Symbol, Picture, and Font. It's important to understand at this point that a bullet point is simply either a picture or something from our fonts that are available on the computer. So if we click on the Font button, yes, I know we're starting at the right, but we click on Font, and we could actually choose a font that we actually want to use. That actually is my least favorite option, so we'll just close out of that one. The option in the middle is to use something known as a picture font. Now this is a little bit more fun, and there are several picture fonts that actually come with Word as part of Office. We can search for particular text, or we can just scroll through and find some different things that we want. The key to using a good picture font is that it needs to be of good quality when it is bullet sized, and that means that it has to be usually fairly simple and fairly small. You can see the ones that come with Word are actually just that. They may have a little bit of texture. They may even have a little bit of color or something involved with them. What you can see in my particular bullet gallery is that I was working with Mount St. Helens on another project. We used this image as a bullet point. It was not too bad because it is fairly simple. It's the outline of the mountain, and when it gets small, you can still tell what it is, and it makes it appropriate for the content matter. But you can also see that even this image is a little bit more detailed than what we would normally want for an image bullet point. If you have an image that you would prefer to use, you can simply click the Import button on the bottom, navigate to wherever that image file is, and make it part of this gallery so that you'll have it available for use as your bullet points as well. Let's go ahead and close this out. And let's get to the one that I actually use almost exclusively, and those are based on symbols. We'll give that a click. And this also brings up kind of a variation on fonts. We can see that by default, Microsoft Office looks for the symbol font, which most computers, most PCs have. Then it's simply a matter of finding characters within that font. Now we have to go back through a little bit of review and remind you that there are several different types of fonts. There are alphanumeric fonts that primarily contain ABCs and 123s, and then there are symbol fonts. And symbol fonts don't contain ABC and 123, they instead contain symbols, like we can see here we have the symbols for playing cards. Depending on which fonts you have on your computer, you will have different choices. I happen to be kind of a font junkie, so I have all kinds of fonts that I've collected. 
but you'll always have a couple that are really good for bullet points, primarily things like wingdings and webdings. So let's click on the drop down for font, and I don't like to scroll, so we're going to start typing W-I-N. This should scroll our list to the W's, and then we can choose wingdings. Wingdings is a symbol font. There are no ABCs and 123s here, there are only little pictures. And you can simply click on a picture to see what that may offer you. And when you find the one that you want, you simply select it and then click OK. Remember, the purpose of a bullet point is to support or enhance the message, not to overwhelm it. So don't do something just because it looks kind of cool and you want to use it. Use something that's appropriate. In Wingdings, if we scroll all the way to the top, we can see several that might be appropriate for computer training, which is what we're talking about with the You Got It training company. For example, we do have the mouse, which we've already seen. There's a little keyboard, there's some floppy disks, some CDs, and some other types of things. So if we wanted to create a different type of bullet point, we might select the keyboard, then say OK, and that brings us back to this window, and we can kind of see a little preview of how this is going to look. That's really all there is to it. Then we simply say OK, and we've just created a custom bullet point for our list. If you've used prior versions of Office or other applications, you may be saying, well, but what if I don't like how small it is or what color it is? We can do that very easily in Office 2010, but remember, we have to access the bullet point itself. Just like controlling the numbering, we can also control bullets by right-clicking on the bullet itself and not the text. When we right-click here, we can actually adjust using the mini toolbar. Remember, the bullet point is really just a different type of character. It just happens to look like a picture in this case. So let's see what happens if we change the font color to something different, maybe to blue. Now because we still had our text selected, the text also became blue. So let's go ahead and use the undo key, control Z, and undo that. Let's make sure we don't have the text selected, but just the bullet point. I'm going to click on it first this time. Now you can see how that's selected and not the text. It does select the entire list because you can't do them separately. Now we can right click, apply the blue color, and we'll also see what happens if we make it 14 point. Now you can see the difference. We are able to customize both color as well as the size of the bullet, but we do so by right clicking. If we right click on the text, and again, whenever we do this, we have to make sure we select all of the text, otherwise we will just be working with one line. When we right click here, we do also have the option to work with the bullets here. Initially, we did this from the ribbon. Doing so from here gives us the same options, when we expand this out, we can choose from the gallery, or we can also choose to define a new bullet from all the way at the bottom. Now, even though I really like being able to do things this way, for example, changing the color of the bullet point, we have to be careful. As a general rule, we want to be sure that we don't go overboard by having too many different styles of bullet points. The general design rule is that throughout a document, throughout the entire document, we should have one style of bullet point for each level of text. Remember, we can have up to nine indents or nine levels in Word. So currently, we have a couple of styles. We have the keyboard that's blue. Down below, we have the mouse that is black. And at the very end of our document, or at least further down in the document, we have both hyphens and little round black circles. That's probably not the way you want to leave your document. You should be consistent. Pick one style, one color, and follow that throughout the document. The last thing we may want to do is actually tighten up this text a little bit. By default, the bulleted list is just following the same spacing that we already had in our text. But remember, we can work with these because each one of these list items is a paragraph. So how do we change the spacing between paragraphs? It's a little bit of a review. But let's go up to the Paragraph group on the Home tab and click on our line and paragraph spacing. First of all, we could change it from 1.15 spacing to 1.0. But we also can see at the bottom that we can remove the space after the paragraph. Let's try that one first. And then if we still don't like the results, we can put it back to single line spacing. That may allow us to tighten up the text just a little bit. Now I'm not sure that that was critical in this particular situation, but I just wanted to remind you that bulleted text is still just text. 
but every line is also a paragraph. So all of the features that we know about formatting both characters or fonts and paragraphs still apply, even with lists. And one last little reminder as we're trying to learn new things, but also remember to tie them all back to what we already know, is that text always has a style. And if we expand the style gallery, we can see that this is actually using something called the list paragraph style. If we want to update the style to be just what we did with our bulleted list, how do we do it? Well, we right click and we could say update to match the selection. And that now becomes the new setting for our default lists. And with that, we can see that customizing bulleted lists is actually fairly straightforward, but not something that people often think about. Now we know how to access these options and to create bullets that actually mean something as it relates to our document, and hopefully can dress it up a little bit for our audience, as well as kind of bring out a theme, if you will, for things like, in this case, a computer training document, where little round dots may be okay, but mice or keyboards may be something just a little bit more.